Hi. Um, so for my mnemonics paper, um, I am um, creating a loci um, mnemonic of the memory terms applied to the board game Mousetrap. Um, so starting off, what is memory? Um, so memory is um, the storing of information um, used to remember past events to help guide us um, for future events. Um, and applying that to Mousetrap, I would say the whole assembly here um, represents the process of creating memories and retrieving memories. So that process I am um, chunking out into three sections, um, an encoding section, a storage section, and a retrieval section. So chunking is where you take a set of information and you break it down into um, collections of um, chunks. So imagine a um, phone number, right? You have the area code, three numbers, and four numbers. So those are three chunks. You've chunked out the 10 numbers. Um, here, my chunk I'm doing is um, the encoding area is from the gear to the boot. Then um, the storage area I have is being from the yellow bucket down and um, into the bathtub. And then the retrieval being from um, the diving board all the way down to um, the mouse, capturing the mouse. So. Um, <laughs> how is this connected? <laughs> um, starting with the encoding process, um, we can describe the gears as being an example of rehearsal, where um, essentially new byte of information is brought in and you're reiterating it over and over in your head. Right? You're, you're spinning the gear over and over, um, trying to remember that phone number. Um, However, that's not often sufficient, right? That won't event, unless you bring in other methods to reinforce that information, um, that information will ultimately slip out of your short-term memory. Um, and so I describe this whole portion as um, <clears throat> engaging with deep encoding. So deep encoding is where you have many layers, many levels, um, of engagement um, to um, pull the information in, right? So encoding is writing the information down. It is um, pulling in um, the sensory data and um, um, trying to get it written down, taking notes. Um, shallow would just be if you use the gears, um, but I would say deep, you know, to connect it is like, Right, you actively went out and you got a new rubber band, you oiled the hinges so that everything is working really well to give you the best opportunity to have an aha moment to hit the yellow bucket and to get things, that new information moving into your actual memory, your long-term memory. So I touched on it just now. Um, so that's the difference between shallow and deep, but um, there's often confusion with short versus working memory. Um, they're not interchangeable terms. Um, they're both very fairly short in duration um, but and, and in bandwidth, um, but they aren't the same. So my metaphor for mousetrap applied to that would be the yellow bucket is short-term memory, right? The marble is sitting in the bucket, our eyes and our ears and our senses brought in that new information and it's ready to be moved. But if it's not motivated to go anywhere, then it's just in short-term memory. All of our efforts to work with the information, to see new ways to connect it, eventually motivate it. And that, is, that, that effort um, is working memory. Where we're actually taking that new sensory information and doing something with it. Um, let's see. So, so that, right, as you can see, we've moved on to the storage phase. So the storage chunk 
is from this yellow bucket all the way up to the bathtub. So, um, we have a model of that um, referred to as the multi-store model of memory, um, and that is that's broken into three increasing um, durations of memory. So there's momentary sensory memory, where it's just the impression that your um, sensory organs gave you. Um, the short-term memory, where it's that information is brought in, it's sitting and it's waiting. And then long-term memory, where it actually has been encoded and brought in and stored successfully. Um, right. The benefits of long-term memory is that once it gets into the bathtub, well, it can be called upon later to do something else. So once it's there, um, it's 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 much more useful um, over a longer period of time. So that was the multi-store model. Um, to um, so let's see, um, yeah, the definition for storage is to um, the maintenance and, um, I guess, containment of information. Um, one thing that's very interesting is that um, we don't linearly um, bring in new information. Um, and um, in looking at that, like, we've realized that there's certain effects and certain patterns that occur when people try to um, learn a whole bunch of new information. And um, it shapes out in what we call the serial position curve, which I'm mapping to this, uh, to the shape of um, the slide here. So I'm sure if you thought about Mousetrap, you'd remember, oh yeah, like it connects, like I can remember what happens at the end, at, you know, at the start, um, you know, blue so slides, uh, you know, connects to the red slide. Like I, I can remember that. And then I remember it hitting and messing with this finicky pull at the end, right? So I relate that to the serial position curve where we have the primacy effect at the start and then the, um, uh, recency effect at the end. So the primacy effect, um, has to do with we tend to remember um, the very first things we learned um, because we were just starting to encode, we're nice and fresh, and there's just a little more details to remember at the start. Um, we tend to sag in the middle because it gets monotonous. And then once we finish the set of new things we're learning, um, the recency effect comes into play where we realize, or you know, we're at the end, and so those very last bits of information um, kind of have a tapering um, continual um, rehearsal because we're done. We're not adding other things to prevent reinforcing that last piece. So um, that was kind of a piece that I mapped here. Um, you know, downhill, right? It just trickles through our brain to get to the point where that new information is. And if we successfully reach the spot where we want it, then it fills up the bathtub, and now we have what I would say a long-term memory, right? So we went through the encoding and the storage process successfully, and now we have a nice long-term memory that we can use, or we can just simply hold on to it. So, but that would be no fun, right? That's not the point of um, mousetrap. The point of mousetrap is to trap the mouse. <laughs> so um, we want to take this marble that we've learned, and we want to use it. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. So, and I'm going to pause it there. Um, okay. Hi, I'm back. I um, just didn't have the, the best notes um, for the retrieval portion. <laughs> um, but now I do. So, all right, so we have this information. And we've taken a pause, and it's a later time, and now we're coming back to use it. Um, um, over time, um, we might go through a process of consolidation, 
where it's um, reiteration on that memory, um, which strengthens the storage of that memory. And I would consider that being filling up the bathtub. Um, but um, before we retrieve a memory, um, um, there's actually some distinctions between memories. And I would consider this um, different types of marbles. So we have episodic memories, which are personal stories, right? Oh, that marble that had the little feather in it. Like I remember finding that under, um, you know, the vacuum cleaner. That is an um, a um, episodic memory, whereas a semantic memory is concerned with concepts and facts. So you might be able to say, all of these um, silver ones always weigh one gram. Um, that would be a, a semantic memory of yours that you are recalling. So um, recalling, retrieval, is the um, process of um, pulling up that stored memory and utilizing it um, in the present, um, right? So essentially we find it, it tips in, and then a whole series of events happen. But it doesn't mean that we are perfect with it, right? In my experience with Mousetrap, um, sometimes this, this net just doesn't quite make it down. You did all the sequences, but it doesn't quite make it down. Um, and so you just give it a little bump. I would consider that um, analogous to cued um, recall, where you just need a slight nudge in order to get all the way back to, oh yes, that's right, that's right. Um, so multiple choice um, are examples of that. Um, um, free re recall is just fill in the blank. Um, there's, there's, you have, to either know the memory or the information, or you don't. Um, and so that would be a run where the net goes all the way down and it captures it, no nudging needed. We encoded, we stored, and we've retrieved all the way through um, just fine. That's pretty hard. Um, sometimes you just, in the game of mousetrap, you have to get lucky. <laughs> um, but in the game of life, mnemonics can help. <laughs> um, all right, so that is all the way through, um, every time you capture a mouse, that would be um, a, an example of successful um, recall um, in my mapping. Um, but to round out with some more um, connections and notes, um, right? I remember the old man here um, on the diving board. And so I picture him um, right going in his arc into the bucket and since he's old and aging, I apply him towards the reminiscence bump, which is um, a fondness for your adolescent years where you can remember a higher quantity of memories from that time, more so than any other memories um, across your life. Um, so um, the old man and his arc through the sky um, is the reminiscence bump. Now, Things can get off track, right? And um, a breakdown of memories um, is amnesia, where um, um, the breakdown or trauma to the brain causes a loss of memories. Um, so there are two forms of, entero of amnesia. There is enterograde amnesia, which is where you can't make new memories. And then there's retrograde, where you can't recall old. So um, with retrograde, that would be you have a bunch of marbles here, but you can't pull them in to retrieve them. Um, for enterograde, it would be um, you can go through the process of encoding, but it's not going to make it into your storage. It won't make it into your bathtub. Um, so um, those are amnesia. Lastly, um, even if you are healthy, we are um, susceptible to um, uh, memory lapses. Um, so that would be um, um, 
one of them would be the misinformation effect. So that could be if I went to you and I said, hey, you remember the game Mousetrap? Yeah, you know, it's got the yellow bucket and the bathtub and, um, you know, the orange um, soccer ball, you know, in it. And you're like, yeah, yeah, you know, that um, remembering that um, induced soccer ball um, part of the whole game would be um, a misinformation effect applied. Another um, failing, and I experienced this in, in starting this project, was um, imagination inflation, um, where your memories get warped by um, just your own imagination um, pulling in more potential um, information. I remember this game being way bigger than it was. <laughs> I thought it had eight more twists and turns, right? Um, so uh, my memory um, had inflated it. Um, since I haven't been back to it in quite a while. So, um, yeah, that's, I think that's, that's all I wrote. Um, oh, I guess lastly, I don't have a great, um, comparison onto Mousetrap for it, but, um, Iconic and Echoic, um, those refer to our eyes and our ears, and, um, that is in the um, sensory memory phase, where it is a high bandwidth of information just held for a short amount of time. Um, so, yeah, um, thank you. I enjoyed this project.